Hello everybody, this is Paul with Fruitful Trees and I'm so excited about today's video. I've been wanting to make it for so long. It's about grafting from somebody who is an ex uh, expertise at grafting. He's been doing it a long time. He has a lot of experience. It's Alex at Tropical Acres. Here is a tree that I recently grafted. This was before I went to him a couple of days ago to make the video. This was a Kent tree and I wanted to put Angie on this tree. And uh, last year I was successfully able to put one Angie graft in this tree, but I wasn't successful with many others. This year I learned a little bit more and I'm trying again to graft these. So I have a whole bunch of grafts on this tree. Now, I just went to Alex at Tropical Acres to do a video on grafting. And I learned that I haven't been doing this the best way possible. Uh, still, some of these might work, but I'm excited to share today's video with you because Alex is gonna show you what works for him most of the time in a very uh, uh, thorough uh, uh, video. So we're gonna look at that today in a moment, but I'm just excited. I came out here today. This was an orange sherbet I just put on here. I was practicing with, and this I put on here a long time ago. I'm talking like three or four months ago, and the bud is just finally starting to push through. So uh, I'm excited about that. And, and and even though I haven't been doing these the perfect way, they still somehow work. So I'm continuing to experiment with these different graphs and seeing what works and what doesn't work. This time I use different uh, tape uh, for it. And I also have uh, these clothes pins on there to see how it works. This one here, I didn't do that. I, I tied it with this uh, to see how it worked, but that looked like it's coming out and that's great. And let me show you this before we get to the video with Alex. I also have a bunch of seedlings that I planted this year and uh, I, I, I just did these. I wish I would have done these after I went to Alex, uh, but I think uh, some of these might work and we'll just see. And like I always say, a lot of this is about experimenting and, and seeing what works. I have a lot of many failed graphs and that's sometimes uh, in the learning process, that's what happens. But I have a graph here that I recently put on this one. Uh, and this one worked, this one took. So uh, it's exciting. It's also, I wanna remind people to to uh, label your graphs. That's really important and helpful uh, so you know what you grafted. But uh, it's really exciting and I'm just uh, learning about all these different things. And uh, here's Alex's video on grafting. It's an excellent video. I'm gonna put his contact information below the video for those of you that want to contact him. All right, so here's the tree that uh, he's going to finish top working that he started last year. What was this tree originally? This was an okrong. And what happened was we planted an okrong and we planted what was labeled an okrong tong. We got them from two different nurseries. They turned out to be the same thing. Uh, the okrong tong was actually just an okrong. Um, now the problem we found with okrong is that it's actually pretty prone to mango vector and black spot and this particular one had it bad enough that it, we were losing probably a majority of the fruit on it to that disease. So um, okrong is not that popular of a mango anyway. We figured we didn't need two trees, one was enough. The tree over there is the other okrong. Um, so we decided to keep one and top work the other. Um, this one didn't have bacterial spot as bad or, or at all. I think but um, so we decided we were going to turn this into something else. So last year we cut this tree back to a stump uh, and we whitewashed the, uh, the trunk. You can see um, that was to prevent sunburn. With that white paint? Yeah, it's, it's actually just a 50-50 uh, mix of white latex paint and, and water. Um, you don't even need to put the pure paint on there. Acts as like a sunscreen to keep the tree from getting sun scorched. If they get sunburn, um, it can actually kill the cambium. Now if you do white paint is it okay also or yeah, is it, you can use okay. pure white paint. I mean you just you can stretch your your, yeah. your paint a little longer if you if you whitewash it instead of using the pure paint. So anyway um, that's what we do with these most of the time when we top work these trees because otherwise they, they definitely can get sunburn and the wood actually will decay. But we wanted to make the whole tree then at Alfonso, so we put, I put several grafts on it last year. You can actually still see the uh, grafting tape from last year. I, I will repurpose the grafting tape uh, as a tag uh, afterwards, at least for a period of time before I put proper tags on it. And, um, so we had a couple grafts here, and I kind of left the tree alone for a while. Didn't have time to screw around with uh, 
was drafting during the mango season, so the old Okron started to come back. I had to come in and clip those back, um, but I wanted to throw a couple more graphs on here. For a stump this size, I'd like to have a few more than this. This has one, two, three, four graphs on one limb here, and I think it's got one graph over here. So now you completely cut everything off when you cut it back. Yeah. Well, no, not everything. We leave some foliage on the, uh, on the stump so that it can continue to feed itself, but not much. We just need a little bit of leaf material from the old tree existing when we cut it back. And then when it shoots back, we start to uh, graft to it. So anyway, um, all right. So I've got to get my grafting knife sharpened here. All right, so uh, we're getting ready to do the graft. Uh, Alex just sharpened the knife. So it's very helpful to make sure the knife is as sharp as possible. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah, you want a really sharp knife when you do this. And that's because you want that cut to be clean, really clean and straight. You don't want like a jagged, uneven cut. Uh, because if you do that, then the cambial tissue doesn't match up as precisely as you want. So it it's really behooves you to use a very sharp knife. Some people use razor blades. Um, sometimes grafting, you will do that as well. So, um, all right, do I have anything here that matches the size of this scion is the question. And I think I do, it's down here. Okay. This is gonna be kind of an upside down looking graft. But anyway, this tree is in pretty active growth. Actually, I would have liked to have caught it probably a few days ago um, when the growth was just starting to come out. You can see this scion matches up pretty well with this shoot. He means the size. The size matches up well. All right, everybody, you're about to see the professional <laughs> do this grafting. This All is right. one. It's going to look upside down, but I don't really care that it's upside down. All right, so I'm going to make a cut. Just a maybe an inch and a half incision here. And I'm cutting it right okay. down the middle. Right down okay. the middle there. And then I'm going to make a cut on this scion, okay? At a little bit of an angle, maybe a 45 degree angle. I just want a smooth, quick cut, just like that. Okay, you see that? It's like a wedge. Some people call these wedge graphs. Other people call them cleft graphs. And all I'm going to try to do is match this material, which is the, this thin green layer here is your cambial tissue, that's vascular tissue of the plant, with the same tissue on our stock here. All right, and so when I do this, I'm only concentrating on lining up one side. Now, one of the mistakes that I think amateur grafters often make when they do this is they will try to match up both sides of the cambial tissue on the scion and the stock. Okay, and ideally that would be great, right? But rarely is it actually that uh, width on both, both sides. So uh, I just like to tell people to line up one side and just only one side and not even worry about the rest of it when you're doing this. All right, I then take a piece of grafting tape. That's what this is. So is there any special kind of grafting tape? No, or? this is, uh, I think sometimes it's called budding tape. Although I've never used it when budding trees. Um, but other is times- Is budding tape different than buddy tape? Or? Uh, yes, it is. This is a more turgid material. I can wrap the scion really tight. And you see I started behind the graft okay, behind the, the cut, and just, it kind of self-adheres, so you just keep wrapping it around itself. And then I wrap the top, and I wrap over where the stock ends there, and then I just take this and tie, just a simple knot there, tie it off, 
And normally, now I know what this is, but for the purposes of this video, I like to write on this grafting tape and label my grafts. So this is Bennett Alphonse. It's not, this marker is a little too big for, for this. And I'll also usually write the date that I did it. I kind of ran out of space here. I don't remember what today's date is, Paul. Is it the third? Third, third yeah. The third? All right. Nine slash three. You can barely make that out. All right. And then I wrap the rest of the scion. With parafilm. This is parafilm M, which is like a laboratory medical tape. And it's much more stretchy. I just stretched it a little bit too much there, but I'll take another piece off. So this is this material is a, a lot more stretchy than our uh, our grafting tape. So we use this to wrap our scion to keep it from desiccating. Otherwise, it can dry out if we just leave it bare out in the open. So we wrap over this few times. Try to make sure there's no open now, Could spaces. you use the parafilm for the other part that you did? You could if you wrap it real tight, but the problem is parafilm is a little brittle. Uh, this uh, grafting tape, as I call it, uh, is a lot tougher and uh, is less likely to break when we stretch it. Um, and it's we can wrap it a lot tighter than uh, we can with the parafilm, and that's the goal here. We want to press the stock tissue into our scion. Now, once the scion takes, the bud can very easily press through this parafilm, and really the only purpose of this parafilm here is just to keep the scion from drying out, like I said. And You so have to wrap it everywhere, including here, or just I wrap the, the whole thing. No, okay. I wrap the whole thing, and, um, you know, it... Uh, it will eventually push through this material and once the graft has pushed and hardened off its new leaves I will take this material off to discourage any uh, fungal infection along our scion. I will usually leave this on for a solid uh, six weeks or so while it's still healing and that way it doesn't get knocked off easily or something. If bird lands on it or somebody brushes up against it uh, and then I untie it and I will keep this as a tag like I said you can see how I did that with uh, these graphs here okay these are older graphs you can see where the callus tissue has formed in the v-cut and just uh, I'll just tie them a little wider below so I know what I grafted there and this will take a couple weeks to, to push hopefully it takes um, now at the end here, do you completely cover it all, or do you leave it open a no, little? No, I cut it. I, I cover the whole thing, so uh, you know I don't want to leave any space exposed to the air, and um, I just wrap it, overlap it, and uh, that's it. Now I've seen some people use a paper, uh, a clothes pin, or something. You can do that. Does sure. That help? Yeah. Well, I don't think it's necessary. Um, you know, this tape is relatively inexpensive. Uh, you can tie, tie it pretty tight, and if, if you've got that on there, you, there's no real need for a clothespin. And what kind of tape clamp. is that again? Uh, grafting tape, budding tape, uh, comes in rolls like this. This is like a uh, half inch, I guess. And uh, Now, could you have wrapped the whole thing in that? Size. You could, but if you do that, th if you wrap the bud in this, the bud can't push through this material. So it's going to get trapped like underneath it. And uh, you want it to be able to push through. And this, this material here, the bud is able, this is the parafilm, the bud can push through this very, very easily. And so that's what we want. Okay. Now another question is, some people wrap the buds before they put it on so they don't yeah, shake some, it up when they get it on. Right, there. yeah, some people do that. Um, I don't like to cut through the parafilm with my knife because it's just going to dull my knife. So um, I have no problem wrapping it 
after uh, I've wrapped the union here because it's not going to move very much with this wrapped as tight as it's wrapped. So uh, that's why I, I prefer to put it on after. Okay. And your success rate is that pretty amazing with this? Uh, it's pretty high. I guess it's uh, usually 97 percent. So what are some common mistakes you made when you first started doing this? Uh, well, I first started grafting must have been more than 10 years ago now. Mistakes? Uh, or at least mistakes you see people making. Yeah, well, I would say for one thing, uh, people who don't know how to collect budwood uh, will often collect material that is too fresh, too dormant, whatever. And with uh, amateur grafters, I would say it helps, it really helps to have uh, swelling buds on those uh, cyan material. Um, it's less important uh, with people who are pretty advanced at grafting. Uh, so I, another thing is that when you're grafting to something, you really want to see active growth emerging from that stock that you're using. Uh, you really don't want to be grafting to something that is dormant itself because that means the cambial tissue is not flowing as much and there's less likely of a chance for uh, the union to be successful between the materials. Uh, other things that you should that would help: uh, really sharp knives. Don't use anything that's dull. Uh, you know, you want it almost razor sharp. Uh, it does help to sterilize your pruning materials and your knives as well periodically between grafts or between trees. So uh, they can get. Uh, bacterial and fungal infections in the graft union which can cause the, uh, the graft to fail. So those are a couple tips that I can give. Um, How again, would you sterilize the equipment? You can use uh, rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, a 1 in 10 bleach solution works pretty well although uh, it can be corrosive if you're not careful. Um, would you leave the stuff in there overnight or just for a minute? And just no, no, you just a minute just not even, wipe it I off. mean, just wipe it off and just you're trying to kill any pathogens that might be on the blade. Um, and uh, what else? I would say trying to line up, just you should try to line up just one side of the, uh, the, the cambial tissue. A lot of people do try to line up both and then they end up lining up neither. I think that's a mistake that a lot of amateur grafters make, uh, just having talked to them about it. So, uh, and uh, now there's uh, a lot of different types of ways to graft. Do you find this one's the easiest and best to work yeah, with? Yeah, cleft grafts are very easy to do. You can also do what's there's lots of different grafting methods. You can do veneer grafting, uh, for example, um, and there's a bunch of others. Uh, you know, there's whip and tongue grafting, and there's, uh, there's chip budding, and then there's budding and like uh, shield budding, which is what we do in our nursery. Um, so uh, those are more advanced and uh, not really recommended for amateurs. I would just suggest uh, uh, cleft and veneer grafts mostly. Uh, cleft grafts are really simple. Uh, if you're doing it on a rootstock, one thing that helps is to graft above the leaves. So you want to leave some leaf material, even if it's just one leaf, below the graft union. With veneer grafts, that doesn't matter. Um, We've also done things like side cleft grafts, uh, which is like, let's suppose you're grafting into, uh, I'll use this as an example. Suppose we wanted to do a cleft graft, um, but all our leaf material on our rootstock, let's say it's a potted tree, it doesn't matter when it's a tree in the ground, but all our leaf material was up here and our, our scion is too thick for the stem up at this point, but it's thick enough down here, so we might bend this to the side, okay, and then do a incision like this, which kind of acts like a cleft, but we're not decapitating the stock, okay? And just imagine that I was inserting a, uh, a scion into here, and then we wrap it up, and our stock remains intact while we did what was essentially just a cleft a wedge cut on the end of our scion and uh, that way we didn't have to do the long cut that's required on a um, veneer graft. When we're doing a veneer graft you're cutting along the length of the scion which is kind of more opportunity for error in my opinion. So 
That's one of the reasons. What were you saying about leaving, make, leaving the leaves on? What were you saying? Oh, so when you're doing a cleft graft, you're kind of decapitating the stock at a certain point. And if you de if, uh, we're talking about potted trees here. If I had a potted tree, I'd use it as an example. But um, if you decapitate the stock below the leaf level, uh, a lot of times the cleft graft will fail. It'll push, start to push, and there's not enough carbohydrates in that uh, little plant to finish, to give it enough energy to push through the, the, the scion material and put new leaves. It will often die, and then your scion dies, and then the new stock pushes out growth below the scion, um, you know, where it has more energy, I suppose. Uh, so to avoid that issue, if you have a, a scion that is too thick for the stem above which the leaves occur, you can graft lower on the stock and with like a, if you want to do a cleft graft instead of a veneer graft. So uh, one of the problems with veneer grafts I find is that the scion is not always perfectly straight and so matching it up against the cambial tissue of the stock can be tough on that whole cut. So. Uh, clefts or smaller area that you're dealing with, it's easier to find a matching space. Now another question is, so some people will say you should cover it out to protect it from the sun. What do you do? I don't. haven't found it to be an issue. Um, with other kinds of grafting, it does matter. Um, but, um, you know, in this case, actually, this is getting some shade from the leaves itself, so it's not in full sun. Now does it hurt to cover it? No, it doesn't hurt. And uh, what would no you problem. suggest for covering? Oh, whatever. Um, so I know some people use plastic bags, some people use foil. Like what? Yeah, if, if you're just trying to keep the sun off of it, any kind of material that's going to block the sun will probably work. Um, so you know, commercially we use shade houses, but uh, you know, I've, I've done top works where I've left the material totally exposed and the graphs all tuck, so uh, it's not always necessarily uh, required for the graphs to succeed, but it probably helps ready to take sometimes. So, all right, so I guess I'll throw a couple more graphs on this thing if I can find it. So once you get these new graphs on, the old ones pushed through, what do you do with that when you don't want any of the old tree left? Right, so once your graphs have pushed, it depends on how much they've pushed because you don't want to be too harsh in cutting back all the leaf material from the old variety initially. Uh, but uh, at a stage like this, for example, I can cut anything coming out of it and the tree is perfectly fine. I would say a couple flushes of growth from your scions before you think about uh, taking all the, the material off from the old variety. So. Now, will the old variety keep growing back, or and you'll keep having to trim it, or eventually it will for stop. a period of time? But then, what will end up happening is um, I'm just looking for a spot to match this up here. Uh, eventually, it will stop doing that, and uh, you won't have to be actively out there trying to cut it back anymore or pinch off the growth, as I like to say sometimes. All right, so. Here's another piece here. I'm just going to cut some of this material that's in my way so it doesn't interfere with doing the graft here. Now, one thing I like to tell people is that the, the scion can actually be slightly wider than the stock. So in this case, I'm going to choose the widest point of our stock stem. What if the stock is wider? Is that not as good? That's not as ideal. Okay. Correct. You, the, uh, you're better off if one's going to be wider than the other. I would say uh, you're better off having the scion slightly wider than your stock rather than the other way around. Okay. Sometimes you're left with a little piece of overlap there and I'll just trim that off. So show everybody again here, what part do you want to match up on here? Yeah, this thin green layer here okay. is your cambial tissue. That's what you're trying to match up. So we're going to take that and just kind of gently press it into here until it looks like it's lined up. See? It's lined up pretty well here. That's about as good as we're going to get. Yeah. 
Does it matter how big the Zion is? Not really, no. Um, that's not really too important. I mean, when we clip them for people, we will typically... I'm going to trim off some more. in my way. We will typically do four to six inches. Um, but sometimes, you know, if, if where it's occurring on the canopy, there's like multiple shoots coming out from where you're trying to, uh, to take your scion off, then you end up just cutting it kind of short and you end up with a shorter scion. That's okay. Um, just as long as you have enough room to do your cut. It usually works out fine. I've done really stubby scions before when I've been doing this kind of grafting and they ended up taking fine. So now, do you pull that tight or you don't need to pull it tight? Um I might pull it slightly tight without dislodging the scion. So, okay, it's probably more parafilm than I needed here, but sometimes I'll stretch the parafilm along as I go. All right, and there we have it. Another graft completed. And then I'll throw one more on here. Just need to find a spot. Now, does it matter if you do the end or the middle of the tree? Is it better off one place or another, or you just whatever you can match it? I put wherever I can match it. I don't get too fussy about it. Now, one thing I do is when I top work a stump like this, you'll have I'll cut them back to the scaffold limbs, and I like to put a few grafts on each scaff on each scaffold limb. Um, you know, so that I'm not left with just like one or two limbs that have grafts on them. I prefer to have like you know, three or four. So, so what do you mean the scaffold limb? Scaffold limbs are these first limbs coming off of the trunk. We call those the scaffold limbs. Okay. So that's your your base of your tree is those limbs, and you're never going to want to cut your tree lower than that point, um, particularly if that's where your grafts are occurring. But um, generally, that's kind of base structure of your canopy and even if the tree got hat racked for example you would still have those limbs partially intact um, unless you wanted to totally decapitate it and just cut it to a bare stump so which I don't usually recommend with, uh, especially with older mango trees so, all right so I'm gonna find and the, not just the size, but are you looking for something greener or? No, that doesn't matter so much. Okay. Um, it's really just trying to match the size of the So stream. would something like this be good here? Like, Yeah, except that this is occurring on our graft, so we're not going to regraft you. Right. the same thing. Got you. So, okay, I think this might work here. In fact, this will work. So, i cut this here. Okay. And how long before you might see mangoes coming from these? Uh, two years would be probably typical. How thick should that scion be on the sides? Can you show us? Um, actually, I'm going to recut this one. But you can see here. Okay, there we go. It's a little better. Trim off the excess here. All right, so I got two sides to choose from. I'm going to go with this side here. Sometimes, though, you start with one side and you're like, well, actually it matches up better with the direction of the cut on the other side. 
Alright, so there's where it matches. Let me get my tape going. I can get it out of the bucket here. So in this case, yeah, it didn't stay in by itself, so you have to be a little bit more careful yeah, to make sure it stays on there. i got to start wrapping it um, while I'm holding it, while I'm pinching it here, and I can always correct it a little bit as I start to wrap it. pinch it a little bit and I can just kind of line it up as best as I can here and continue to wrap it. So does that need to be really tight on there or just needs to be covered? Just needs to be covered. Doesn't have to be super tight. That's good enough. Alrighty. And that's it. So that's it. Then you get your labels on there. Now, how many I know your your goal is to top work this whole tree into this new tree. Yeah. But what's the the most of different uh, varieties you put on one tree? Uh, over here, the most I've done is three. In fact, this one over here, Paul, has three on it. This one? Yeah. Um, that tree has three varieties because when I collected the budwood for these two, it was the only tree that seemed to have new growth coming out of it. And I was like, well, I just want to get the varieties in here. So I put them on this stump, and now what I've done is uh, this variety here is getting badly overgrown by the other two. Uh, this is Tong Dam. Uh, this is a mango from Thailand. It means black gold. So we decided to give Tong Dam its own stump, um, just like we're doing with this Bennett Alfonso, so that we don't have to be concerned about it being outgrown by its, its stump mates. So this is the problem with putting multiple varieties on the stumps. Uh, very often something becomes more aggressive than its uh, neighbor. And then the one that is being outgrown suffers, dies back, or goes into decline. Uh, so uh, this has Shwayazama, and the other one is Shamsul Asmar, which is a mango from India. And uh, they're much more vigorous than this Tang Dam, apparently. So. Alrighty. Um, and what about season-wise when you do it? I know you want to get trees that are the same vigor, but what about season-wise? Is it better to do different or the same? I would say if it depends on what your goals are. But like if you're trying, if you're a small yard person and you don't have room for a lot of trees, then I would say try to stagger the season. It's not going to matter that much. Um, you know, the earlier season one is going to flush growth uh, sooner than the later season one will most likely, but otherwise it really comes down to the relative vigor of the cultivar more than the season. So even if it's a later season variety uh, and the early season one has a head start on it, if the later season variety is more vigorous than that early season one, it's still probably gonna outgrow the early season. Maybe. Okay, and the tree we just did, how do you know if it didn't take? Like, or how do you know if, if it did? If within a couple weeks the uh, scions, you can see through that clear material, have turned black and necrotic, um, you know, that's an obvious sign that the graft failed. 
Sometimes the graft will succeed, but the bud will not push for a period of time that extends several weeks. So I've even had some that were months before they pushed. Most of the time they'll, they'll push within a couple of weeks. So we'll, uh, we'll see how those turn out, but uh, you know, hopefully we get at least one to take and then that stump is pretty much finished and completed and it'll grow into our new Bennett Alphonse. So you just tree. did three and you've said if one takes, how many did you do last year on there? About. Uh, I did four. So four. Four, four or five. I don't so about five or six is enough for the whole stump? In that case, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if it was a larger stump, I would say probably more. I've, I've top worked pretty large stumps before and I've put uh, more than a dozen grafts on some stumps. Um, so it's the more that take, the, the better off you are, I suppose. But you don't need that many. In theory, okay. you only need one. But I prefer to have multiple limbs growing off it with uh, the grafts on it. So. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you very much, man. Thanks. And I'll uh, put Alex's contact information below the video if you want to get to his website and check it out. Thank you. Thanks. All right, everybody. There it was. That was Alex grafting and teaching about grafting. I've been wanting to make that video for a long time, and I'm glad I did. I know you're going to learn a lot from it. Uh, what I suggest is experimenting with uh, the way Alex does it. I'm going to put the link to get those, uh, the type of grafting uh, tape he uses below the video. And yeah, uh, just keep learning. And I know a lot of people that do it different ways. And usually in time, you learn what works and what doesn't work. Uh, but everything works to a degree, but we do want to do what works the best. All right, I hope that was very educational for you. Have a blessed day, everybody, and keep growing.